In fact, that's the next table that we get, is the MANOVA F values. So after BOX's M test, which is not a great test of the co quality of covariance matrix, we actually get the ANOVA. You can ignore the intercept um, section. I think it's not very informative in most cases. And just go to the second row. And this is where my independent variable is, education level. Okay, and, it's and SPSS gives four different approaches to calculating an F value for MANOVA, and you've got to choose one. Roy's largest root is the most powerful, but it's also the most susceptible to uh, deviations in your covariance matrices. Roy's largest root has been criticized so much that some people say you shouldn't use it under any circumstance. And I'd be inclined to probably endorse that approach as well. If you had a perfectly normal distributions and perfect covariance matrices that were exactly the same across all groups, then maybe you would interpret it. But in most cases, you're not going to get it. The vast majority of people report either Pillay's trace or Wilkes lambda. Pillay's trace is the least sensitive to uh, violations of the assumption of covariance matrix. So if you have a hunch that you have violated the assumption and you want to keep yourself protected from rejecting the null hypothesis when it's in fact true, then you should use Pillay's trace. And in this case, Pillay's trace, the value is 0 0.30, but the actual F value is 11.94 and it's significant at p less than 0 0.001. So we've rejected the null hypothesis that uh, the education levels are the same levels of intelligence based on a MANOVA-derived combined dependent variable by, pushing, by combining the, uh, the uh, nine dependent variables together in a canonical variate. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. Partial eta squared is equal 0.15. So f about 15% of the variability in intelligence across all nine dependent variables in a canonical MANOVA derived uh, estimate is being determined by, is being accounted for by the three group levels. This is basically bar eta squared in the ANOVA case. But it's in Mano it's, it can be interpreted in the same context as the ANOVA case, but it's actually MANOVA. Wilkes lambda is a little bit larger, uh, so you'll have a choice to choose one or the other. Pillay's trace is usually the smallest, but it's also the most robust to violations uh, of assumptions of, of covariance. So you have the option of using Wilkes lambda, so either 11.9 or 13, and significance level, both p less than 0 0.05, and then you get slightly different partial eta squared values. And then you get observed power, and in, in all cases, it's greater than 1.0. And so if I chose place trace, I could report it as 1.0. It's not very informative, in my opinion, observed power. Uh, I think if you didn't reject the null hypothesis, then you'd maybe have an idea and say, well, power was only something like 0 0.30, so we only had a 30% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis, when in fact it was not, it shouldn't have been uh, not rejected. We should have rejected it. Uh, but overall, I'm not a big fan of observed power after the fact. You should be calculating power before you do the analysis, not after. The, so once you, once you reject the null hypothesis with the MANOVA F, so either you're using Pillay's trace or Wilkes lambda, you then would follow it up using the first approach to doing MANOVA with a series of one-way ANOVAs. So I've rejected the null hypothesis based on a combined variable, combining all dependent variables. Now I want to look at the individual dependent variables separately with ANOVAs. And before I do that, I have to accept the homogeneity of variance assumption. And in this case, it's being tested with Levine's test. And across all nine variables, dependent variables, the homogeneity of assumption is being satisfied. None of the p, except for two, the p values aren't less than 0 0.05. And ANOVA is relatively robust to violations of homogeneity anyway. So unless the standard deviations that I looked at up here were something like three or four times larger than each other, and the sample sizes weren't equal, then I would uh, be concerned. But given that the sample sizes are roughly equal, and the standard deviations are all within about 20% of each other, uh, I would be sa I'd be satisfied that even though I've rejected the null hypothesis in these two cases, for memory 3 and spatial 1, I'd still feel like I could go on and do the ANOVAs. I sh I'll find a reference for four times greater the standard deviations. Probably OK. I'll have to look for that. Uh, the next table is the biggest table because it's a series of, well, it's a bigger table because it's 
uh, nine separate ANOVAs on the dependent variables. Because I've rejected nine ANOVA null hypothesis, I feel, according to some people, confident